uh, myself and um, Erebus Loxley. Um, my name is Leslie O'Ryan in real life, and in Second Life, um, Dr. Goldie Twig. I'm a um, associate professor at, counsel, uh, at the um, Counselor Education Department at Western Illinois University. Uh, Jake Glazier, or Erebus Loxley, is an advanced master's student at Western Illinois University. Uh, he's in the, his um, final year and his clinical field experience. Uh, I want to thank Jake for, or Erebus, for putting this presentation together. Jake has an absolutely incredible use <clears throat> an understanding of technology and counseling, and I believe that he will not only emerge as a leader in the counseling profession, but also as a leader in the use of technology and in counseling. So, really appreciate his help and and um, this um, process. All right, <clears throat> thank you, Goldie. I first want to uh, kind of cover the background, um, how we became interested in Second Life and uh, where we kind of came up with the idea to use this in a class. We uh, here at Western actually had a candidate come for a li liaison position and uh, she talked a lot about social networking uh, on the web and about using Second Life to um, really teach students and to communicate with students. After kind of doing some research uh, on Google and uh, Eric and PsychInfo and other scholarly resources, uh, I came across the counselor educators in Second Life. And um, the counselor educators in Second Life, and they have a scholar in residence program that really appealed to us as far as not being able to, um, we didn't have to purchase land for ourselves. We were allowed to use um, a skybox and really build a kind of counseling center for ourselves. So we were fortunate enough to be able to do that. And so um, I did that. I set up that, that skybox. Um, so that we could use that for a class. And let me just back up here. The, the Western program is really moving to a clinical mental health counseling option um, instead of the community option. And so Dr. Orion, or Goldie Twig, was uh, really interested in using Second Life for a, a new crisis and trauma class that was going to be offered in the fall. And so this is, was really kind of our long-term goal here, was to really implement Second Life into this crisis and trauma class. Uh, after kind of talking about it, researching it more, we uh, decided to do a pilot test uh, during a So we decided to, uh, as we decided to um, do a pilot test, uh, <clears throat> we um, uh, decided to use my summer lifespan class, and <clears throat> we became curious about how um, students' learning styles or lear learning preferences would actually um, impact uh, or interface with the use of Second Life. And so uh, through the lifespan class, uh, we designed a um, particular class. Uh, we um, uh, chose to uh, use a uh, learning preferences um, instrument called uh, the VARC. I'll talk about that in a moment, a little bit uh, further. And um, to uh, really look at students' levels of satisfaction of using um, uh, second Life based on learning style preference. Um, and we also decided that it would be better ultimately to, to back up and maybe not start with um, suicidal ideation and, and assessment um, as, we had, as we had thought in the fall, but to back up and, and uh, use as, as uh, we talked about the uh, um, midlife review. 
So the instrument that we chose, the VARC, is um, some of you may be familiar with it, but it it uh, really the learning style instrument is really perfect, I think, for use in Second Life in looking at learning style preferences. It's really the um, VARC instrument uh, stands the V A R K stands for Visual Oral read, write, and kinesthetic sensory modalities. Now the VARC is interesting because instead of looking at uh, learning style, which has 18 dimensions, uh, the VARC really looks at one preference. And that preference is uh, that it, looks, that it uh, focuses on is uh, really uh, about t how, we are, how we prefer to take in and put out information within a learning context. So it's really, I think, an excellent instrument. Um, it's a part of a learning style, um, but it's, again, it's really more about learning preference. So, so the questionnaire itself asks 16 questions. It's very brief. Um, and it, rather than to choose one learning style <coughs> preference, it really gives um, scores across uh, the um, uh, five areas. So um, uh, because it believes that um, there are seldom instances where one mode is used, and really we probably do access uh, many modalities in learning. But I think it's interesting uh, in terms of the uh, scores that it gives for each modality, and I just briefly want to describe each one because, again, I think it really fits in with um, um, the use of, of um, uh, things like Second Life, so on and so forth. So the VARC looks at, the uh, first uh, modality to look at would be visual. Now this, it, what's interesting is that um, this particular um, dimension or modality could have been called graphic. We think of visual, this is really less of uh, looking at um, um, looking at our, how we enjoy or prefer movies, videos, PowerPoints. What it does is this modality looks at designs, white space, patterns, shapes, the different formats that are used to highlight and convey information. The uh, auditory dimension. Uh, of course, is pretty clear cut. It describes a preference for information that is heard or spoken. The uh, <clears throat> read or write dimension uh, looks at uh, a preference, um, and typically people who would be stronger in this particular dimension um, are often people who are actually addicted to uh, things like PowerPoint, the Internet, uh, quotations, words, um, so on and so forth. Kinesthetic, uh, of course, looks at the uh, perceptual preference related to the use of experience and practice, whether that's um, simulated or real. So um, the kinesthetic uh, modality, um, again, um, is really less about, uh, again, a, a, is really a less real about, experience. Uh, again, I could, uh, so, uh, really uh, whether a person pre prefers uh, 